So, this morning we're going to talk about tolerance, intolerance and prejudice. So first I need to define those words because we're all watching from different year groups and we might not have come across those words before. So tolerance in its general sense, the word tolerance means how much you can cope with something, how much a material can cope with something before it breaks, how much a person can cope before they get angry, a tolerance. So intolerance is lack of tolerance, it's the ability to break straight away, that you'll say no straight away, you can't cope with the thing. So that's what tolerance and intolerance mean. But what's prejudice? Look at the word. Prejudice is two words joined together, pre-judging, pre-judgment. So prejudice is the idea of having an opinion on something without having any facts, without thinking it through, without being, having critical thinking to work out what the best course of action would be. So if someone is prejudiced, it means they've formed an opinion without researching it, without looking for facts. So we're going to talk about these three things. And the best way I thought is a little story. Now, it is a true story, although it, I, I've uh, come across it. I wasn't actually there. So um, a man walks into a pub. It's not a joke. <laughs> and if you're thinking, oh, there's a joke coming, there's no joke coming. There's no jokes coming and there's no song coming, all right? Um, a man is in a pub. He's um, a business a businessman, and he's in a different city that he's used to. He's travelling on business. And before he checked into his hotel, he went into a pub in a strange town, a strange pub, for a drink. And he went up to the bar. We'll call him John. So John sat at the bar having his drink and he notices two metres away, socially distanced, to his right is, um, is a young man in his early 20s who's also drinking a pint of something. And the barman went over to this man and went, bent over to him and said, get out of my pub, like that. And the man looked up from his drink and said, well, what? What do you mean? Get out and don't come back. But, but I'm not doing anything. I haven't done anything. I don't care. Get out. So the man left his drink and walked out. And so our mate John is just sat there going, oh dear, what sort of pub is this? You know, people just told to leave. And the barman came over to him and he said, what, what was going on there? And he said, you probably couldn't see it from where you were standing, but that man had um, a, a swastika tattooed on his arm. And on his other arm, he had the words, kill the Jews. Ah. The barman said, we can't tolerate that kind of intolerance. He said, if I see that, I want them out of my pub because tomorrow he might come back with one of his friends and he'll be a nice guy too and he'll have a nice drink and a nice conversation and then next week a few more of them will come and then in two weeks time this will be a pub full of Nazis and it'll be a Nazi pub and then it'll be too late to do anything about it and then they won't be nice. So it's an interesting one. Uh, you probably thought that I was going to say that we should be tolerant of all things when we, we should be tolerant of opinions of people's religions we should be tolerant of different cultures we should be tolerant of opinions and uh, people's life choices but the one thing that we cannot be tolerant of is intolerance and it's a sort of paradox we should not be tolerant of intolerance we should be intolerant about intolerance and that's what i'm talking about today i'm going to give you some examples we should see racism and other intolerances, anti-Semitism, and we should call them out. It's our job to call them out before it's too late. Now, you might think, uh, who's this guy telling me this? Well, it isn't my, just my opinion. It is my opinion, but it's not just my opinion. All the teachers at the school have signed up to a prevention strategy to prevent racism, to prevent anti-Semitism, prevent extremism, and it's a policy. It's a policy we all signed up to, and it's called, imaginatively, Prevent, right? So <laughs> that's a good name for it. And we've all agreed to do it. So we've all agreed that all teachers around the, around the country have agreed um, that we have to call it out. And now we're telling you about it too. Now you could say, as people do say, well, hang on a minute, if people's got an opinion, if someone, even if it's an unsavory opinion, we can't curtail their free speech. It's a free country. We should be able to say what we want to say. We should be able to do what we want to do. It's a free country within the realms of the law. Now, here's an example. So imagine a man 
um, maybe imagine a man my age, say, and he's called Bill. We'll call him Bill. And, and I'm telling you about him, and I'm saying, oh, he's a bit thick. Yeah? Can I say that? I can. It's not nice, is it? It's not nice to be rude about someone, but I can say it. It's not a crime. Now, Bill, he's also mean. Yeah, he's got his mean. And he's tight. He's so tight, yeah? He opened his, he opened his wallet and a moth flew out. Yeah, that's how mean he is. He never spends a penny you know, on anything. Can I say that? Yeah, I can. It's not a nice thing to say, but I can say it, and it's not a crime. Now, uh, Bill drives a BMW, and, he, uh, and he's a he rubbish driver, like all BMW drivers. Yeah? He's, he's inconsiderate on the road. Can I say that? I can say that. It's rude, but now it's prejudice, because I haven't met every BMW driver, so I can't say that one BMW driver, all of them are the same as Bill. I can't say that. I can, I can say it, and it's not a crime, but it is rude, and it is prejudice. Now, Bill is Jewish. So if I was to say, oh, he's mean because he's a Jew. Now, is that rude? Yes. Is it prejudice? Yes. Is it a crime? Almost. And this is where things get complicated, because if I'm to highlight the fact that Bill is Jewish, and recount that as a reason that he is like he is. Do I, have I met every Jew, every Jewish person? No, I haven't. But that links to history. That links to what happened to the Jewish people. And then we call it anti-Semitism. And that is a crime. And we need to call it out. How do we do it? We, we, we need to overcome the ignorance um, that we have of things like this. So if you say, why can't I say that about the Jews? Well, education is the only answer to overcome ignorance, to explore diversity and learn how other cultures, what other cultures' histories are. Now, in uh, our school, we celebrate other cultures and our own culture a little bit, don't we? We have Christmas, don't we? And we have Easter, don't we? Yeah. Last year, we, ha we celebrated Chinese New Year and our Korean students gave a presentation about New Year and their culture. We had uh, a German teacher organised Oktoberfest, a German cultural event. Now we didn't celebrate Eid, which is um, an Islamic tradition. We do have Islamic students here. We didn't celebrate um, Hanukkah or Yom Kippur, um, but we have had Jewish students here. So I put it to us to discuss later on. How do we choose which of cultural events to celebrate? Do we have to have somebody here before we'll do it? Or should we be looking at a wider, what cultures around the world anyway? It's a question we can discuss. Now imagine if we had a visitor. Imagine if we had a visitor from Alpha Centauri, yeah? From another world, another star. And he, she, or it, I, I don't know what, what, what gender they would be. Um, we'd probably have to ask them what gender they preferred to be called. You know, we can't just assume that, can we? You know what I mean? We can't. We, we should be polite and, uh, and ask what they, how they want to be termed. But we've got our friend from Alpha Centauri comes along and, and they say, oh, it's the 6th of October. That's the day we celebrate Life Day. That's our celebration. Yeah, Life Day. Now, would your response to that be, well, I don't want your culture th shoved down my throat would it be that or would it be life day that's interesting what happens on life day tell us about it maybe we could we could do some of the things that you do at life day since you're so far from home i'm hoping it would be the latter but when sainsbury's that's the shop sainsbury's they um put on twitter this week two, two days ago a tweet saying a little graphic that said sainsbury's is proud to celebrate black history month people's response was I don't want that jammed down my throat. I'm not shopping at Sainsbury's anymore. And then go somewhere else. And then followed a massive amount of quite horrible, obnoxious tweets. And then if I was to read them out, I would have the trustees, uh, you know, serious questions about my ability to talk to students. So something is going on. Other cultures ran down my throat. So... Why would we, why would anyone have objections? I don't know, but why would we, would we have objections at school? So let's tackle that. Would we have objections in this school to looking at other cultures? Would we have objections to it? 
and I'm hoping not, but I have heard some, so we're going uh, we're going to tackle them. First of all, um, should we learn about other cultures? Well, it is a school, isn't it? That's the point of it. So the point of it is to learn stuff, isn't it? What's the point of just staying where you are with the information you've got? We want to learn new stuff, and why not learn about why not learn about um, other things, other people's lives? When I was in a previous school to this in Oxford, um, forty nine percent of the population of students were Muslim. So it's a very different experience to this. We're in quite a monoculture here, where people from very similar backgrounds. We have foreign visitors from different countries. But the, the general cohort is quite similar. Imagine if half your friends were celebrating Ramadan. It would be a different experience. So, um, so I think the fact that we have a very homogenous, very similar culture is another reason why we should be looking at other cultures can't just sit and look at our feet and navel gaze we should be looking at the rest of the world and see what see what they're about so that's one reason of my three reasons the other reason is and this is a curious one why should i bother with black history month or whatever it, it is because when i'm not a racist i'm not right you're not racist we're not racist right so we're not racist so why should we worry about it why should we worry about racism when i'm not a racist so I don't need to deal with it, do I? I don't need to talk about it. Or do I? If we decide that we're not racist, and we also say, and I'm not going to talk about race, then what we're saying is, I'm going to leave talking about race to the racists, or to whichever group that it is, to the Jewish community. Leave them to sort out anti-Semitism. Leave a black community to sort out um, problems. And I don't think that's fair. I think it's our job to call it out. It is our job to call it out. Here's another example. Now, in uh, the 1960s, there was a rock group called the Beatles, and I'm not going to talk for very long without talking about the Beatles, as some of you know, because that is my uh, expert subject on Mastermind. And I challenge you to think of a question I don't know about the Beatles. But anyway, in 1964, the Beatles left Liverpool in England and went to America. And those days, they sold records, and the biggest selling records was in the charts, right? I don't know if you have that nowadays. And the biggest selling single was number one. That was a Beatle one. Number two, number three. They had the whole top 10 was all Beatles songs. The, the, the LP even sold so many copies, it entered the singles chart. And they had to create a separate album chart. So they're very popular. Now, those days, when you're playing in uh, playing live music venues, the a venue would be like a theatre or a town hall, and it would hold about 2,000 people. Not very many people by today's standards. And that's... The problem was though all the 2,000 tickets had sold out and there were 20,000 plus people outside who wanted a ticket. So the police had a problem in America and they're thinking, what are we going to do? There's going to be a riot. We can only fit 2,000 people in, 20,000 people turned up. So they opened up stadiums, they opened up um, baseball grounds and football grounds and said we can, do, we can get 60,000 people in here. And the Beatles became the first stadium band. But then we, hear, we, we met this other problem. In some states in America, they had what was called segregation. And that meant that black people and white people had to do different things. You've heard, I'm hoping you've heard, and we'll hear it this week, about Rosa Parks, the story on the bus, that black people had to travel on different buses or different seats in buses, or had to give up their seat to a white person. Or maybe you've heard about um, that in some states, you couldn't get certain jobs if you were black, or that the toilets were men, women coloured and it was legally arranged like that so um, discrimination was enforced by law it was how it was so if you went to a concert it might be all the black people have to go on this door on this side of the auditorium the white people this all the white people at the front black people at the black now the Beatles weren't used to this we didn't have this we don't have this fortunately there are other prejudices but we didn't have this segregation in um, in Britain so they refused to play. Now imagine that, you know, they're not going to go on. Imagine what the police thought to that. We've got 20,000 plus people, all paid tickets to watch the show, and they're not going to go on. What are we going to do? And that night, segregation ended in that, st in that state. Because four white guys called it out. So we can't rely on people who are suffering to call it out. We've got to call it out. Now this week, this month, sorry, we are, um, we are been talking, you've probably heard, that uh, 
we're going to be talking about Black History Month. Now, we haven't just invented it. It's not a thing the school's invented. It's a global thing. It's happening all around the world. And so you might hear about it over the next couple of weeks. But you might think, or someone might think, Black History Month, well, why, why that? Why that? Where's White History Month? Some people might think. And the answer is to that is history. And so I want to talk a bit about history and about race. Now, race is invented. It's an invention. There, there, is, there is only one race, and that's the human race. There used to be other races. There used to be Neanderthals. There used to be Denosians. Uh, but now there's only Homo sapiens, so there is only one race. So why do we talk about race? Why, why have we got this thing? Genetically, there's the same difference between a black person and a white person as there is between a tall person and a short person. But no one would think, let's have tall person history month, would they? No one would say, let's have blue eyed history month or green eyed or brown eyed history month or small person history month. We wouldn't have that. And the reason is we don't have prejudice um, that's been targeted systematically and endemically towards tall people or short people or blue-eyed people or brown-eyed people. We haven't had that. So let's take back to uh, around the 1400s, late 1400s, 1500 AD. Imagine you're a farmer and you're operating a farm. Maybe you've got a bit of money and you've got a big house. You have to pay staff to work the fields. You have to pay staff to work in your house and be your servants. You have to pay them. Now imagine if a new thing comes through, a new idea comes through, that there's a certain people that you could bring into your farm and you didn't have to pay them. How much money would you make? A lot more. You wouldn't have to pay your staff. I'd just give them some, some gruel or something. Um, you don't have to treat them very well. You can just let them sleep in a barn. Imagine that. Now, if that happened today, I think we would all say, which I think people would have said at the time, well, that's not very nice. Slaves? Getting people to be slaves, my slaves. No, I don't think I'll go along with that. Especially at the time, being a Christian, you might say, it's against my beliefs, you might say. So why did it happen? Why did it happen for nearly 250 years? Why did people from a lot of European countries sail to Africa and gather 24 million people, kill their leaders, rape their women, take loads of them on boats that would, would probably only hold 30 people, but put 200 people on it, and take the people in a boat across to America and the Caribbean islands. 24 million people. Two million people died in, en route, and they were just thrown overboard. When they got there to the Caribbean, they were sold to rich landowners in America or to landowners in Europe and Britain, and they were put back on a boat and they sailed from the Caribbean back to Britain. How could you justify this? And there is an answer. This is what people said at the time to justify it. These people, they're not really people. This is uncomfortable for us to hear now, but this is history and this is why we need to know about it. They don't really feel pain. Not in the way that you and I do. This is what was said. These people, they're not they're primitive, they don't think like we think, they don't feel pain. And more importantly, especially for the Christians amongst you, they don't have a soul. So it doesn't matter really, do what you like with them. And that convinced enough people to make slavery an act of law and to make it possible for 250 years. Because they weren't really people. As soon as you dehumanise one person, you dehumanise all of us. But slavery did come to an end, and through the works of, there was a religious group called the Quakers who initiated it. There were people like William Wilberforce and others who um, fought for it in Parliament. And eventually, in 1815, it was banned in, by law in Britain. Other places came later. In America, they had a war about it. In America, they were split in half. The North said we shouldn't do it, the South said we should do it, and they fought about it millions of people were killed and the repercussions of that civil war are still reverberating today even though slavery was abolished so slavery was abolished game over brilliant that's the end of that great we've done it 
yeah, no more problems. Except no, we still have prejudice going on today. Even though slavery was abolished, other things were going on. In the early 20th century, some people did a study of thousands of skulls. And it wasn't a scientific study. A scientific study is where you, you have a theory, you look for evidence, and whatever the evidence says, that's the truth. The evidence said there's no difference in the skulls, no matter where you come from, no matter what race you were born into, what country you came from, there's no difference in skulls. But these particular people said there was. They said that these skulls from this type of people are smaller than these. These are the superior skulls, and these people, these white people, are better than everybody else. It's called white supremacy, and people believed it. They gave names to these races. There were three. So the white race was called Caucasian. It's a word I'm not going to use. I think it's a racist term. They said the black people were Negroid. I'm not going to use that word again. And people from Asia were called Mongoloid. They didn't have a name for people from the Indian subcontinent, which is weird. I don't know what, what that was about. Now, we know there is no race. Get it into your head. There is no difference between these people apart from certain genetic changes that make you have produced menlin or different shaped features on your face. It, it's no difference between a tall person, a short person, a black person, a white person. Just tiny, tiny, infinitesimally small differences. If you're looking at DNA, if you wanted to look at that, which they didn't know at the beginning of the 20th century, what's the difference between you or I? 0.01%. We're almost exactly the same. We're 50% the same as a cabbage. 50% of our DNA is the same as a cabbage. About 70%, 70, 80% same as a slug. So you can't use DNA as a justification for racism. But at the beginning of the 20th century, they didn't know about that DNA. And so it was used as a reason to say that these people are not normal humans, they're subhumans. These people are not as good as these people. And the Jews, they're not proper people. They're more like animals, really. And that led to what we call the Holocaust, the murder of six million Jews. But today, the 21st century, do we still need to talk about this? Has it gone away? Is the problem finished? So I was preparing this talk over the weekend. And this morning I looked at the news. And in the news today, today, on the 6th of October 2020, today there was a headline that said... In London, near the Houses of Parliament, there's a plan to build a Holocaust memorial to remember this genocide that happened of six million people. And it wasn't just Jews. It was black people, homosexual people, disabled people, people with learning difficulties. The Nazis wanted to exterminate all of those groups. So there was this plan that's been planned there for years to put a new Holocaust memorial near Parliament in London. And the news today was it might not happen because people are worried it will become a focal point for white supremacist terrorist groups on the 6th of October 2020. So don't tell me it's all right. Don't tell me with the, with the riots in America and the problems that they have and elsewhere in the world that we don't need to talk about race and prejudice and intolerance. We can't pretend it's not there. It was only a few decades ago when there were signs in the windows of boarding houses in Whitby and other places in this country that said, no dogs, no Irish, no blacks. We're better today. We're better than that. We don't do that today. Today, we can call it out. Today, by law, we have equality. Today, we realise that we're all brothers and sisters today. Today, we call out intolerance. We're not going to tolerate it. We can't sit by. We can't pretend it's going on. It's like a virus. It's like a virus that spreads. How do you deal with the virus? You isolate it. You isolate it till it dies out. You can't wait for a miracle for it to just go away. It's not going to go away on its own. We have to isolate it. We have to quarantine it. We have to silence it. And that's what we have to do with racism. So I put it to you today. The one thing that we cannot be tolerant about is intolerance. We call it out, and together we stamp it out, and together we put an end to racism.
Thank you for listening.